Hey crafters, happy new year to you. Here is to a very fun and very crafty year ahead of us. Hope we have lots of good crafting adventures and learning experiences and creativity and a lot of fun. At the time I'm filming this, it's actually the holidays and I am visiting my family. We're having a lot of, a lot of fun, good chill time. We're doing a lot of projects, you know, helping out around the house. We're cooking, we're doing crafts. I'm kind of staying off my social media for the most part, taking a little break and it's good. By the time this video comes out, it's gonna be January. And I thought we could start off the year with a really fun project that I have done once or twice before and I really enjoy. I thought you guys might enjoy it too. We are going to be doing some snow dyeing you guys might remember I tried this project last year and it was a lot of fun we're basically doing tie-dye but without the tying part and instead of using a liquid dye we're gonna use powdered dye and some snow now I'm visiting my family and they have snow which is pretty special I don't usually have access to that craft supply <laughs> You can do this project, of course, with ice as well. Just putting that out there. If you're like me and you don't have a lot of snow in, in your part of the world, ice works as well. But with the snow dyeing process, it, it's really fun. You get some garments, you know, some natural fiber is going to work the best. I'm using mostly some thrifted pieces <clears throat> like this one. And then we're going to wad up those garments and put some snow on top. Then we're gonna sprinkle powdered dye over that snow and hopefully that snow is gonna melt and liquefy the dye. Then the dye is gonna drip through the snow onto the garment and we're gonna have some, some trays underneath those garments to catch the liquid. It'll go through the garment, hopefully making a cool pattern. You never know exactly how this is gonna look. It often looks kind of swirly, kind of watercolory. You never really know until you're done. And once all the snow has melted, all the ice is, you know, gone through the garment, then we wash the garment and see what, what we got, what happened. This is a really fun project. It's kind of low stress. It's low control. You never really know how it's going to turn out. It does make a bit of a mess, but uh, this is a really fun one for me. I love, especially when it's kind of the colder, grayer, darker months of the year, I love doing some tie-dye because it... It just brightens my life. Maybe you'll get inspired to try this too. We're gonna show you the supplies we're gonna use. I think we're also gonna hit the craft store, get a few more things. Most of the garments we're doing are thrifted, so this is budget friendly as well. And then we're gonna take all those supplies, we're gonna go out to my parents' garage. <laughs> They're very kindly loaning us the space. We're gonna tarp out our work surface. Then we've also bought these um, large aluminum pans from the you know kitchen section of the grocery store we also have so we have the pans and then we have some little plastic lids that go over the pans and we're going to try to punch some holes in the lids or we might use some old cookie racks to kind of put over the pan and we're kind of making like a a, a dyeing rack really we want to be able to put the garment on top of the kind of the hole punched sh or rack shape then we'll put snow and dye on top of that as the whole thing melts through the garment it'll melt into the pan underneath and then we'll have our snow dye process so i'm excited to give this a try let me show you the supplies we've got so far and we will get started well here are some of our candidates so far all of these are thrift store purchases over time, looking for items that are natural fiber as much as possible and lighter colors that we can dye. Got a couple of these for my sister. We'll see if she likes any of the t-shirts. I also got this kind of taupe t-shirt dress. It's like h and It's super, super boxy. Kind of excited about that. And then this gray sweater kind of tunic thing, like a waffle knit. I want to see if that'll take the dye nicely or not i don't know gray isn't the best color on me so if i could add a little color it could be nice and uh, let me show you some of the dyes well here are some of our supplies so far we're going to be working with a little powdered you can hear that powdered writ dye this stuff's great because we can sprinkle it on the on the snow 
and let the snow melt and liquefy the dye, which will then hopefully drip down into the garments and look cool. We're also doing kind of an additional step. I bought this soda ash fixer online. I'm going to be dissolving this in water, just following the package directions and putting the garments in, soaking it in that solution a little bit. It's supposed to help the dye kind of connect in with the fibers a little bit more. I'm afraid I'm not a, a dye expert to know how all that works, but it helps a bit, so we thought we'd give that a try. We're also hoping to head to the craft store to get a few more colors. And then since we'll be working in the garage, we're going to, of course, need some tarps to prep our work surface. And I think we're also going to be working on some big, um, like, turkey roasting pans just from the grocery store um, to allow our ice to melt without making a giant mess. So we're going to head over to the craft store. We're going to grab a few more supplies. Might even hit a thrift store or two to find, see if we have a few more pieces to go. But I um, think we have a lot of good stuff to start with. And then we'll head on to the garage and do a little dyeing. Good morning, it's the next day. We've got all of our supplies ready to go. My dad has prepped an amazing work area here for us in the shop, in the garage, and we are about to get started. So let's give you a little tour. Welcome to the garage lair. Okay, we've got our garments. We've picked up a few new ones. Our dad has made this amazing table and tarped off area for us in the workshop in the garage. We're gonna use some of these turkey roasting pans and the plastic lids that go with them. Let's see, and then we gotta check out the dye situation too. Well, we went to the craft store. <laughs> we, we bought a little more Rit dye. We may have too much dye now, but some of these packages are not full from previous projects. So we got a lot of colors. I think we're gonna be sticking mostly with, say like cooler tones with cooler tones or like warmer tones with warmer tones. Kinda depends on the garment. Like we have some gray items, which we're probably gonna take a little cooler. And then we have some things that are like kind of a cream color, which we might go a little warmer. So now we got to take our garments to the sink, get some soda ash fixative on there, and get those all wet. And then we can bring them back out to the workstation and get some snow and start snow dyeing. Yes. It's a good put of snow down on that end. Okay, so we've got these plastic lids that come with the basting trays. And our goal is to like use scissors to punch some holes in this tray so that we can put the garment on top and let all the water drip down so that the garment isn't sitting in a puddle of kind of muddy colored dye. However, using scissors wasn't working so well. So our very efficient dad brought us out some real tools and we have a little bit of scrap wood and we're using this to punch some holes in the lids. We hope this is really worth the trouble we're going to. It may be. We'll see. And it lets you get out your expression, so that's always good. need to punch these a little more but we're just kind of going for just some holes try to let the water drip through we could be here all day so as you can see here we have two different lids this was the lid we were trying to do scissors with and you got some pretty nice holes but then there's quite a few that didn't punch all the way through very like resilient lid um, and so the nail method is a little bit more even and it's a little bit more punched through which we liked with a lot less effort they both take a lot of effort honestly but um, 
this one's a little frustrating because you don't poke through all of the time. So you're just like stabbing something repeatedly until it starts to crack where you don't want it to. Where this one is a little bit more systematic and pretty for the perfectionists of lid poking, holding things. Yeah. Okay, update on our drip pan situation here. Lindy's experimenting with a couple different options over here. Okay, talk to me, Lindy. What, what did you do differently to these two lids? So, as you can see, this one pops onto the tray nicely, but when you have a bigger piece, um, the fear is that it's going to actually go over the edge, down, and onto the oh, table. Oh, so the, the snow melt and the die? Yeah, the snow melt is going to actually run off the top. So our solution oh, okay. for like a sweatshirt is to actually cut the rim off and place the plastic bit, as you can see, is actually in the... Inside the tray instead of the on tray. the tray. So there's like a moat here where the die can run off. So we're going to test both of those and see which one is like a little bit more successful one thing i will note is that it almost felt like this lid wasn't going to fit inside it was like oh. very wibbly wobbly didn't like one end would pop in and the other pop out but once you have the weight of the fabric on top of the lid it fits really nicely inside of this dish okay so maybe for like smaller pieces it's okay to just put the lid on the roasting pan but mm -hmm. if you want to cut this edge off and put the lid inside the roasting pan i like this for the sweatshirt it looks like it's stable and it's not going to spill dye everywhere yeah okay so now we just have to do that with all, all the rest of them okay we'll get back to you guys okay so lindy's got a cool t-shirt she's working with talk us through how you're arranging it on your lid here so one thing I always consider when scrunching things up is where the garment is stained. So oh, this yeah. one has some stains around the armpit. Oh. Thanks to my brother. It was my brother's shirt. Ew. Ew. <laughs> um, so I want to make sure that those get dyed so they don't look funny. So <gasps> I definitely want those to be sort of more pulled out and not like tucked down. Um, mm. Another thing is I really like this pattern. So I kind of like want to play with it and scrunch it so you get a really cool sort of effect so some bits are kind of more scrunched down and then some will get it on top on the graphic design yes on the graphic nice and then you know consider that the shirt is thicker because it has to get to the back side as well so that oh, also yeah. is plays into how you want to scrunch your shirt and somehow you're making it all fit on the roasting pan, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about how we are now going to be stocking our local Goodwills for our old cookie baking racks yeah. <laughs> and try to use those in future. This will work. A better solution. But yeah, that would be good, especially if we can get them secondhand. Yeah. Okay, that looks really good. Okay, so then we have another t shirt here. We've got a sweatshirt here. I've got a sweater to do. Oh, she's got another t-shirt coming up here. Let's, Let's see if I can put this all on one. Oh, okay. That'd be cool. Because they're similar colors. Oh, and then you could sprinkle them both at once. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I love that t-shirt. That's going to be really cool. Yeah. We did go to Goodwill yesterday and got a couple more pieces. But, um, yeah, okay. We're going to keep scrunching here, and we'll get back to you guys when we start busting out the dye. All right, we're putting snow. On the shirts. Can't say there's a rhyme or a reason to it, but it's satisfying. Yeah. Our snow's gotten a little melty because it took us so long to do the lids. That's okay. It's cool. We we have a lot. We have lots of snow. There's more snow. It's okay. We won't run out. This guy's looking pretty good. Kind of like pack it on, right? Because we want it to take a little while to melt. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Oh, I gotta get it on the other ones. Okay, I'm gonna put on some gloves and help out. Okay, well we got the gray sweater, we got a whole bunch of snow, and I think I'm taking this one in the cool zone with some of these cooler colors. Hopefully, these guys will be dark or bright enough to show up a little bit on the gray, but also take the gray in another direction that's hopefully a little bit easier for me to wear. 
I think the teal may not show up quite as well, but I'm pretty sure the navy and the purple will show up pretty well. So let's start with this guy, actually. Let's do a little navy. Okay, here goes some navy. Let's just kind of get this. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's get this in some patches. Little like cloudy spots. Okay, so there's our navy. Let's try a little purple. But look, look how this navy is melting. It's all I'm seeing a lot of purple in the navy already. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but it's almost looking mauve. Okay, here we go. Getting some purple. Ooh, that's fun. Oh, that's pretty. That's cool, yeah. Looks like a geode. Oh, it sure does. It totally does. Let's call it geode dyeing. All right. Let's see. I'm thinking maybe just do some little accent pops. Uh, a little bit of royal blue, and we'll try a little bit of teal just to see if I could get it open. That'd be good. Okay, we've used a little bit of this royal blue, so. Oof. Here we go. If I can get it open. Hmm. Work on Oof! I'm making a mess. Watch out. Oh, whoa. Ooh. This is looking really vibrant coming out. Oof. It's interesting how the navy's more like a dark purple. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that turns out once it's all melted. For real. Yeah. Hopefully it's not just going to be like a puddle of blue, but, you know, it'll be good. I kind of just want to get each patch of ice covered with something. Mm-hmm. Okay, just getting some teal. I think that could be really cool if it turns out. It could be really cool. I, I don't know. I've had hit or miss with teal. Sometimes it's it's just enough. Other times it hasn't been as intense as I was thinking it was going to be. So it, it may not be a thing. But pray for the teal. Pray for the teal. Good power to the teal. Okay, I think this guy is good to go. Let's head on over to some of our other pieces. And then we'll show you how this looks when it's done. All right, so we're trying something new for the very first time. We're taking blue and we're taking navy and we're gonna mix them together. Ooh, royal blue and navy. So the royal blue is a beautiful blue, but it's not quite as dark as I would like it. And the navy is a little bit purple. Yeah, and I'm it does look kind of purple. That it's just going to be purple without Ooh. the blue. So here's the plan. Here it is. Ooh, that looks nice together. Yeah. Try to... A paper plate would work well for this purpose, as well as a box lid. Ooh, look Remember at that where together. Remember saw it first, folks. <laughs> Remember where you saw it first. That looks really cool. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. Okay, we're back to that sweatshirt that Lindy found. We're going to see I... if this is enough. Like a white cropped sweatshirt. I didn't get a good before picture of it because we just thrifted it yesterday, but it's a Tommy Hilfiger cropped sweatshirt. Do we need to mix up a little more? We're going to have to mix up some more. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Honestly, I think this is going to be really awesome on the white hoodie. And it'll kind of go with the graphic design that goes on there. It's also got a colored zipper. Yeah, I think that'll be nice. Are we measuring it? No. Is it going to be different? Yes. Is that okay? Totally. Yes. This is why we like snow dyeing. We're not going for an exact 
so don't stress it. It's not a perfect science. It'll be fun if it's a slightly different mix on the bottom half of the sweatshirt. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then we'll get some variation of color. I'm just loving looking how this is starting to kind of melt a little bit. Because yeah. our snow is pretty wet, so it's it's melting pretty Can quickly. Can you tell I like blue? Ah, you know, I think it's going to look really nice with with the garment. You yeah. Know, it's kind of where the garment wants to go. We're not taking away from the logo too much. It's yeah. simple, but should be really effective. Yeah, I can't wait to see this when it melts. Okay, guys, look how cool this dye looks on the snow. It's amazing. Although we are noticing that we are really grateful we have this whole surface taped off or tarped off because look at all this dye dripping down the sides. I think we should have punched a few more holes in the lid and maybe having, you know, cutting the lid down so it sits in the tray more is a good idea. A little less messy, a little less dangerous. We're going to be going around and mopping up dye drips and snow drips and of course we're really grateful to have this whole tarp area that we're working over so just some notes i think looking for those cookie racks in future and maybe even some larger pans to work over maybe even some tubs to work over will be a good thing for us to work on in future just fyi guys fyi oh man okay this is looking pretty cool definitely took longer than we thought, but the snow is starting to melt. And we're getting some colors coming out, which is pretty fun. So we're gonna let these guys sit for as long as it takes for that snow to melt. I'm guessing it may even take us into this evening, maybe overnight even, depending on how cold it is out here. But then we'll take these guys to the sink, carefully rinse out as much dye as possible, and then launder them on cold and dry them, and then we'll show you what they look like when we're done. Well, you guys, it is a new day, and we have a whole bunch of pieces to show you. Let's start with this one. Here is that sweatshirt my sister did with that mix of dye using the navy and the royal blue powder mixed together. Kind of fun seeing some of those different blue tones come out, some of the lighter, some of the darker. She was hoping to get a little more white still remaining on this one. But, um, yeah, it didn't really happen. We still got kind of an overall blue-gray, but it still seems to really fit the nature of the sweatshirt. Uh, let's check out another one here. This one was a crop top my sister brought along. And, man, this one turned out really cool. She used some green. She used some teal. I think she used some navy. We didn't use yellow, but I think this is coming out from the teal. And just thought that one was really fun. Let me move a few other pieces around here and we'll show you the next ones. Well, here's that dolman sleeve top. It's kind of hard to see in the original picture, but I thrifted this guy a while back. And this one's interesting. So my sister was originally using just the petal pink, but then we ended up accidentally getting some dark green on it and so you know ended up sprinkling some of that on as well oh my gosh i think this is really cool she's like oh i really wanted it pink you know how that happens you always got an idea in mind and then with these processes you just can't you just can't guarantee what's gonna happen she was looking for more you know more of this pink color coming through but i feel like the green is so strong and the petal pink dye is so light that the green kind of took over and it's kind of cool seeing its blue tones come out. You can see kind of a little more blue there. And then when the pink mixed with that green and the blue, it kind of came into this like mauvey purple thing going on, which, you know, that's not the original vision for this piece, but I don't know. I think that's really cool. I do enjoy snow dyeing because it's a little different. It's not your original tie-dye it's not quite as predictable with its like patterns and designs it can be a little tricky because you can't guarantee what you're gonna get but i don't know i think that's kind of cool 
accidental invention. Well, these t-shirts may be some of my absolute favorites. I purchased the tree shirt and then my mom had this awesome kind of like surfboard beach shirt as well. Both were white cotton t-shirts. Oh my gosh. I love how the fabric took so much of the dye. I love the colors. Oh my gosh. I know this guy had some teal. He had some green on there. A little bit of the blues. So interesting how we get a lot of this yellowish coming out from the greens, but I love it with the trees. It almost looks like the trees are backlit. And then of course we got some really nice melted swirling dye pattern going on. I feel like the lightweight t-shirt material really responded nicely to that melting puddling dye. That's kind of amazing. Okay, but you gotta see this guy, oh my gosh. So we used a yellow, a fuchsia, a little bit of teal, and I believe the royal blue. And those mixed together were giving us some orange and some purple and some kind of brown. We got a little bit of brown, a little bit of mauve. But oh my gosh, I think, you know, my sister and I both agreed we really love this rainbow bright thing that happened. And love how the, the colors mixed together to give us so many different tones. And then, of course, the graphic design on the shirt. It's just simple graphic design. Looks so nice with the ice dye pattern. Definitely want to do more in this color combination. I think this may be one of the favorites. Okay, well here is that sweater that I was working on. We used some navy, we used some royal blue, we used some purple, and even a little bit of teal on what was originally a gray waffle knit sweater. And I, I okay, I have a lot to say on this. I have a lot of thoughts. I love the cool tones on the gray sweater. I felt like that took the gray into a new direction, but without too much difficulty. It's interesting to note how the waffle knit fabric kind of took the dye in patches and the dye didn't spread as much as it did on the t-shirts. I also could have used more dye. I had the shirt or this sweater kind of wadded up pretty tightly to fit on the roasting pan. And if I'd spread it thinner, I think I would have gotten more dye coverage. So that's kind of a note. This piece is bigger. It's a different weave than some of the other pieces. So it took the dye differently and could have used more dye. One thing that I think is a little weird <laughs> is though some of those splotches kind of look like eyeballs to me. <laughs> Am I crazy? I don't know. See, it's like purple, but then there's like a yellow center and it happened a couple times. That yellow must be coming from the teal. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Other people kind of go, oh, it looks fine. And I go, it kind of looks like eyeballs. <laughs> That's the beauty of tie dyeing, guys. Sometimes you get it the way you envisioned. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get it better than you were looking for. And other times you're kind of like, oh, that's kind of weird. Um, yeah. So it's fine the way it is. However, I do have a little more time. And I think I'm going to go back out to the garage. I'm going to grab a little more snow today. And I think I'm just going to especially try to get some blue and some purple. Just kind of, especially on the front. Just kind of this kind of area and kind of blend in some of the darker spots. The eyeballs. And just bring a little more color to some of those areas and just kind of even out the pattern just a little bit. I know I don't have to, but since I have some time, I'm going to try it and I'll use the exact same process. I think I'm going to use the same colors. I'll use the purple and the royal blue and some navy. I don't think I'm going to use the teal though, because the teal got kind of interesting. Sometimes it was pretty green, which I love. And other times we got more of this kind of yellow thing coming out. It could be also part of the purple, but you know, some of this happening, which is very interesting. So I may not use a lot more teal, but we'll see. <laughs> it's a process, right? 
Okay, well, I'll try this again, do a little updating of this, and show you what it looks like when we're done. Well, guys, if you get behind experimenting and trying out things and learning stuff and, you know, having fun turning not colored stuff into bright colored stuff and just going for it, having a blast, give this video a big thumbs up, will ya? And consider subscribing for more bright and crazy and fun stuff coming from Partners in Craft this year. We got a lot of fun stuff up our sleeves. We're excited to be crafting in this new year, and we hope you join us for the adventure. Okay, I'm going to get to fixing the eyeball sweater, and I'll show you what she looks like when we're all set.